In Warsaw, police has raided president of Poland's palace and arrested Maciej Wąsik and Mariusz Kamiński, two top opposition party politicians responsible for fighting corruption since 2005. According to witnesses, both politicians were escorted out of the building and delivered to a police station. Monday, Warsaw District Court issued an arrest warrant for those two people. In 2015, they were charged for abuse of power while fighting a high-level corruption. In November that year, President Andrzej Duda used his power of clemency and clean them from all charges. Last year, Warsaw District's court ignored the president's pardon and issued two years in prison verdict. One chamber of Supreme Court supported the president's clemency, while another is due to deliver a verdict on December 10th. Monday, Speaker of Sejm Szymon Hołownia said the situation surrounding the expiry of the mandates of Mariusz Kamiński and Maciej Wąsik does not guarantee that the same sessions will be peaceful. The emotions that have been created make it unlikely that we will be able to sensibly work on the budget, because everyone's head is warm. Will it be different next week? I don't know. Maybe it will be different. Maybe it won't. The Speaker's decision came up as a surprise, because the same has to pass the budget bill by the end of month, so there is a little time left. Coalition majority, because it was probably Prime Minister Tusk's decision, proves they are in panic. Indeed, the decisions that were made led the parliamentary majority to hit a wall. It is already clear that passing the budget without MPs Wąsik and Kamiński could make the bill illegal, and therefore the president will be able to dismiss the same. TV Republica reporter asked the same speaker about his criminal liability for interfering in the work of the Supreme Court. In example, which chamber and which composition should deal with the case of Mr. Wąsik and Kamiński? I have absolutely no fear of criminal liability in connection with the decisions taken by the speaker in this matter. I want to draw your attention to the fact that the actions I'm taking only confirm the decisions already made by the courts. In 2015, the president used the law of clemency against uh, Mariusz Kamiński and Maciej Wąsik for the actions of the services of the so-called land scandal. Despite the amnesty law and three rulings by the Constitutional Tribunal, the District Court of Second in instance, it sentenced the MPs to two years imprisonment in December last year. A warrant for their arrest was issued yesterday. Małgorzata Paprocka, minister of the president's office, stressed that if the MPs go to prison, they will be the first political prisoners since 1989. Leaving aside the personal situation of the two deputies, this decision is dramatic from the point of view of the state. Such far-reaching legal uncertainty is devastating for the Polish state. Criminal law textbooks for students do not exclude the possibility that the president may exercise the power of pardon before the sentence becomes final. We cannot rely on the opinions of lawyers who say that the right of clemency can only be applied to sentences that have already been passed, because we have never had such a situation. We are talking about the constitutional prerogative of the President of Poland. The President of Poland can use the right of clemency against any citizen at any time, of course, if there are appropriate grounds for this. President Andrzej Duda invited Maciej Wąsik and Mariusz Kamiński to the Palace, they took part in the ceremony of appointing Błażej Poboży and Stanisław Żarin as advisors to the President of the Republic of Poland. This morning, the police received a court order to arrest the MPs. If this situation continues, we are heading towards a totalitarian state. A grim dictatorship is being formed. We cannot allow political prisoners in Poland. We appeal to all Poles for solidarity. Former Deputy Prime Minister Jarosław Gowin testified in the same before the Commission investigating the attempt to hold correspondence election in 2020. The date for the election was given months before the pandemic broke out. When the infections appeared, the opposition, whose candidate Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska had very low ratings, so her party wanted to cancel the election until the pretext of an epidemiological threat. The then ruling Law and Justice proposed correspondence election, and the opposition rejected this 
and every other possibility to solve the problem. The two sides reached a compromise only after changing the candidate to Rafał Trzaskowski. Jarosław Gowin served as deputy prime minister in the law and justice government in 2020 and opposed such a correspondence form of election. Jarosław Gowin, who was deputy prime minister in the government at the time and is credited with blocking the correspondence election, appeared before the committee. Member of Parliament Waldemar Buda of Law and Justice asked Gowin whether in those days he received offers to change the government coalition and take up positions in the new political setup. At stake was the seat of speaker of the same and even prime minister of Poland. Jarosław Gowin admitted that he held talks with politicians from the opposition, but refrained from revealing details of the negotiations. I have several confirmations that you spoke via electronic messaging and Mr. Radosław Sikorski offered you the position of prime minister. Please confirm this information. Did you share this news? O tym, czy dzielił pan się tę informacją z innymi kolegami wówczas porozumienia w tym zakresie? Przyznam. I do not remember this. There is a possibility. Tutaj zawodzi. Na pewno jest możliwe, że Radosław Sikorski. Przepraszam, ale panie premierze, to jest. Sir, do you refuse to answer? Zgodnie z tym pouczeniem pana przewodniczącego, jeżeli pan nie nie jest możliwość wypowiedzenia się. I don't remember such a proposal, but I can't exclude such a possibility. My goal was to prevent a male election and not to overthrow the government. Kluczyć, natomiast. Law and justice politicians from the beginning want interrogation of politicians of the ruling majority. Boris Budka and former presidential candidates Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska and Rafał Trzaskowski. However, the parliamentary majority rejected the request. Meanwhile, there are statements on the internet from three years ago where these politicians claim to have blocked the elections. I would like to thank Mrs. Małgorzata Kidawa-Błońska for standing firmly against these elections. And thanks to the stance, thanks to the democratic majority in the Senate, we managed to block this legislation. I'm proud of that. Thanks to the Senate and the opposition, we blocked the circus that you were funding for the Polish people. We blocked the absurd correspondence elections that were to be organized by your colleague Sasin who did not succeed in anything. You should thank us now. I'm withdrawing from the election. What is needed now is a fresh, strong impulse that Rafał Trzaskowski is such. That's a relay race. We must win this election. And if Rafał Trzaskowski wins, I will be very proud to say I contributed to it. I blew the May elections and led to a new opening. For me, it's not important who wins this election, as long as it's a person who will defend the Constitution. And that is not Mr. Andrzej Duda. Hearings before the committee will continue. MPs wants to hear testimony from Elżbieta Witek, then Speaker of the same, Senate Speaker Tomasz Grodzki, and Member of Parliament Tomasz Vipi from Jarosław Gowin's party. The Court of Justice of the European Union has ruled inadmissible preliminary questions regarding the procedure for appointing judges of common courts in Poland. According to observers, this is an end to the questioning of Polish judicial institutions, such as the National Council of the Judiciary. The case connected questions from the district courts in Katowice and Kraków about the compatibility of the EU regulations of certain elements of judicial reform. The aim of the case was to determine whether the procedure for appointing judges judges of common courts meets the requirements of the prior establishment by law if some of its members are appointed under the procedure bypassing the participation of judicial self-government bodies on the basis of a resolution of the National Council of the Judiciary. The Court of Justice of the European Union ruled that such questions were inadmissible. Poland has received an additional 29 M1A1 Abrams tanks at 79 mine resistance M80V vehicles, co-financed by the USA. This is the third tranche of M1A1 Abrams tanks purchased in January last year for the needs of the Polish armed forces. The ongoing delivery includes 29 tanks and a stock of consumables. 
the Armament Agency stated on its website that Poland has ordered a total of 116 M1A1 Abrams tanks along with associated equipment. The contract's total value is approximately $1.4 billion, which nearly 200 US dollars financed by the US as part of aid funds granted to Poland. The armed forces expect all vehicles to arrive in Poland by the end of 2024. The agency reports that it also acquired 79 Oshkosh MATV vehicles of the mine-resistant ambush-protected type purchased last summer. The MATV vehicles are designed to offer soldiers optimal protection against ambushes, such as mines concealed in the road surface. Additionally, Poland has ordered 250 Abrams tanks in the latest M1A2S EPV3 version, which delivery expected by 2026. Both orders also include associated equipment, such as M888A2 Hercules Technical Security Vehicles, M1 O74 Joint Assault Bridge, Folding Bridges, or Command Vehicles, as well as Training and Logistics Package.